Be inspired on Liberty Radio. Crippling diagnosis, ineffective treatments, relentless chronic pain. Many have lost their will to live as their quality of life has deteriorated. Joy and laughter have been replaced by groans of pain and suffering, leaving them feeling trapped after exhausting all options. However, it is in these moments of despair that the power of faith can shine through, offering a new path to healing and hope. It's time to reclaim your health and conquer every challenge. Every Tuesday, we shall have the Mantle of Miracles services featuring the Corridor of Miracles with 12 disciples. These 12 servants of God will form a corridor and proclaim your healing by faith as you walk through. Join us in the Cathedral of Miracles every Tuesday only at 7.30 p.m. at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London, N43NX. Invite everyone in need of healing, including yourself, and declare your healing and restoration through faith in God's Word. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Be Inspired Tuesday is the day of healing in the universal church of the kingdom of God. Healing by faith. Like we always say, faith can be a complement to everything we already do physically. And right now, it's just two minutes past 7.30 in the morning. The doors of our churches are already open. In fact, right now we're having our first service of the day, which is 7 a.m. And if you're watching us now, you're struggling with problems in your health. You've tried everything, nothing worked. Let's use our faith together. You can go to one of the UCKG branches, anywhere where you are locally, and there you will find the man of God with faith to show you that what God did in the past, he can still do today. Now, we are going to watch a very very special video. You're going to have the opportunity now to see the video of the inauguration of our church in Seven Kings on Sunday. And it was a blessing. It was amazing. I hope that all of you could be there. But since not everyone could be there, actually only a minority of people, you get to see how the day went. And I believe you're going to be blessed by this video. Let's watch together. afternoon before we do anything else is to thank you for the victory that you have given my Lord. Our church here in Seven Kings is exactly opposite to the train station. This is perhaps one of the best located churches we have. People will find it very easy to get here. And we could see that people were really glad today in the inauguration because our services that were held weekly in Ilford down the road, that special work existed for 17 years. And finally, today, people now have a church here open seven days a week in Seven Kings. After 17 years as a special work, now Seven Kings is open. People here, they're going to be able to develop knowing their faith and their communion with God and also give support to all you know, the, the community here. I feel that the opening at Seven Kings is a blessing. There's so many people around this building that we can reach out to, those that need help, so it's going to be amazing. It's a blessing because this is our first church. It's seven king and it's going to be a blessing to the community, everyone, 
around us and the distance. The really importance is, even though the building is beautiful, it's the message that we get to always be close to God. Every time we come here, we, we are reawakened into the fact that God is the most important thing in our lives. I learned today from the experience that uh, it, it's all in our hands, our salvation. We can't expect a pastor or a friend or a family member to see the way forward. It, it's all in the Bible and it's, it's, it's all down to us. I think it's going to be a good experience with the community. A lot of people will be able to, to be saved, to know about the Word of God and knowing that there is something in the community that will be able to help others to progress and change and be better in their lives. This church here in Seven Kings is a historic building. But the important thing we want people to know here in this area is that regardless of their faith or no faith at all, when they walk through the doors of this building, they will find someone who will not judge them, but who will help them, who will show them the way to change their lives. And if you're watching this video now, you're from this area, know this, that there is nothing impossible for God. He can change your life. And all of this starts with one step. The people of Seven Kings finally have a church to go to every day right now. Pastor Renan is there. And if you are local to that area or you know someone in Seven Kings, Ilford, around that area who needs help, the doors of the church are open. They can go there today. Now, we went to ask people a specific question in the streets recently. And actually, the answer surprised me. We, we put out this question to people in the local community. And I already expected the difference or the answer to be uh, different to what it was. Let's put it like that. We're, gonna, we're going to see the street interviews. And when we come back... We will put the Word of God in front of our eyes like we do in every Be Inspired here in the morning. The UK has a significant number of church buildings, many of which are either closing down or being repurposed. Is there still a place for churches in today's society? I think to a large extent I would agree that there is. Um, Partly I feel that the church has always been central in this country, culturally, historically, architecturally. And I think also they provide a social hub, a spiritual hub for many people in the community. I think that we're very adrift from things that give us roots, that give us purpose, that give us belonging, give us meaning. And churches, amidst many other things, it did those things. Um, and they were real social centres and in many ways our community centres are perishing. I think that there is. I think that church is a bit more about the community though. It's a bit more about the gathering of the people rather than the building itself. Although I do think given how many churches are struggling to get buildings nowadays, it is an issue. I think there is, but it has to be separate from government functions because people need meaning, community, and, and often religion provides that, but I don't want the state to get mixed up in it. Do you agree we still need churches in our neighbourhoods or should they be used for other purposes? Um, both. I think maybe just maintaining as many as there are is the, is the difficulty. Maybe have less and have them as being you know, the vibrant, important part of that particular community that they should be. I don't have the solution other than diversify. Churches provide focus. Um, I think they're uh, a place of worship for many people and I think it allows people from different religions to get together at, spe at special occasions on particular functions and moments of, or festivities for other groups. Um, I cannot see it viable economically for all churches to stay open throughout the country. I think a mix of both. I think we definitely still need churches in our neighbourhoods, but I also think that they are great community spaces, so they can be great places for christenings, birthday parties, different event spaces, because I think in as much as churches are necessary to function as churches in those communities, they also need to be um, self-sufficient, so they need to make a revenue in order to keep themselves going. And part of that, I think, is to have a commercial perspective about how can we use these buildings in other ways to bless the community.
You know, I'll be honest with you, when we asked this question to people in the streets, I would expect most people to say, you know, churches no longer have a place in our community. And I'll be honest, it surprised me that every single person we asked uh, said that yes, churches are needed in our society. And absolutely, absolutely, even though, you know, the original, if you think about the original idea behind a church, a temple, because a church is not a, a modern thing. In the time of the Lord Jesus, we had temples. If you think about the idea behind a temple or a church, it was so that people would gather and there they would listen to the truth. If you think about what happened in temples in the time of the Lord Jesus, that's where um, court cases were heard sometimes. That's where the law was executed. But most importantly, that's where people would gather to hear the words of God, of the prophets, of the commandments. Because of course, uh, it's not like today that we have a Bible and most of us more than one Bible in our home. At that times, people, in, the, in those times, people didn't really have a Bible in their home. They had to go to a place where the scrolls, the Bible was written by hand, and they would then listen to someone speak about the Word of God and explain the Word of God. That's the purpose of uh, a temple, of a church. In fact, the Lord Jesus performed miracles in churches, in, in those temples. And so we see that, yes, churches are community hubs, but more importantly, the church is a place where people go to learn to use their faith. In fact, that happened to us when I remember the very first time that I entered through the doors of the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God and I heard people praying, that, that kind of like um, surprised me because I had never seen people praying fervently coming from a Catholic background. You know, you, you, <laughs> you could hear a pin drop in, in the church when you would walk in. But then walking into the Universal Church that Sunday for the first time and seeing people praying fervently, I was surprised in a good way by this. So the church is the place where we learn how to pray. The church is the place where we learn how to use our faith. But more importantly, the church is also the place where we learn to unite our faith with others because that's important. Uh, on a recent program here on Liberty Radio, Be Inspired, we said that your faith cannot depend on anybody. And that's true. But look what the Bible says. There's another argument to be made that doesn't contradict the first. But God's Word says this. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Please go back. Of course, if two people work, instead of just one person working, they can get more done. So the Bible says that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. So absolutely, we cannot allow our faith to depend on anybody. But at the same time, for example, in the church, why do we have a chain of prayer? Because we learned the importance of uniting our faith with someone else. The Lord Jesus said that whatever two or three agree on earth will be agreed in heaven. And of course, you can't tell me that praying by yourself in a moment of faith is the same thing as praying in a group of people. Imagine, uh, it's not by chance that the Holy Spirit descended in a room where there were 120 people praying, seeking the Holy Spirit. So what happens in the setting of the church? For example, you have faith, but you have seen people being healed in a service, being delivered in, the, in a service, and those people had, have faith. Why didn't that happen 
in their house. Because they had faith in their house. Why did it happen in the service? Simple, because that moment is an environment of faith. And we believe that this is how God works. We see that in the Bible. We see that today. And this is why on the 15th of September, Sunday 15th of September, we are going to be giving to everyone the oil, the anointing oil that is being blessed in all our churches. We believe that when you use your faith in the setting of faith in the church, you receive the holy oil, using it according to the scriptures, in the same way that miracles happened in the past, in the same way that the Bible tells us that those who are sick should be anointed with the anointing oil, I believe that God is going to work in your life because of your faith. And there is a difference between olive oil and anointing oil. The moment we placed the olive oil on the altar and we started consecrating it, it was no longer olive oil. It's anointing oil. And we believe when you use it, you receive it in the church for free on the 15th, in all our branches, you're going to see how God will reward your faith with answers, with solutions. That is our faith. I would like to invite you right now to prepare your glass with water. We are going to watch a testimony right now. When we come back from the testimony, we are going to pray so that when you drink of this water, you receive guidance, strength for your day today for your day today to be a blessing. Let's watch this testimony. We'll come back to say the prayer on your behalf. Faith helped me to show that there is a different way of life. It showed me that whatever problems I'm going through, I don't have to just deal with those problems or think that they just are a normality, but that there isn't actually an end to it. I didn't consider myself to have any problems growing up. I just saw my life was quite simple. I had both of my parents. I have two younger siblings. The problems that we faced, I didn't really acknowledge them to be problems because I just thought this is what a normal family goes through. There was a friction between my parents. There was friction between me and my siblings. And this would enable me to have anger towards them. I would lash out. There was even times where my mom would have to restrict me. She would have to tell me, you can't treat your siblings this way. But because of the life that I was living outside, I had had a two-faced lifestyle, if I can say. Outside, I was nice, I was sweet, I was bubbly. You know, everyone saw me as, you know, this reserved, shy, funny girl. But then at home, I was the complete opposite. I was very moody, I was very angry. And because outside, I wanted to be seen by people, getting attention because I didn't get that, went home and I would then go to my sister and say, you have to respect me. And of course, I'm the oldest, so the way that they would treat me, I, I, I said, I can't be treated like this. I don't accept you to speak back. You don't have a say whatever I say goes it would be a thing where my, my mother my parents would take their sides that would make me be even more frustrated that would make me think okay so who's going to notice me now where where can I be seen I would be so angry at my sisters I would even tell them you're going to die one day I remember being so angry at them and I knew that I couldn't do anything to them and I just went to the room I cried I just teared everything I was knocking things over I was just ruining the whole room and even after that my mom would say you need to go and clean it up so it's, I, I just felt so undermined there was a time where of course me and my sister we was in school at the same time she became popular I wasn't popular she she was living the way that I wanted to live so at school rather than being known as perceived sister it would be oh that's her sister so I never actually had the name for myself I would be jealous towards my siblings because of the way that they had freedom that I wasn't able to have so it reached a point where I had enough I had just finished my GCSEs and of course it was the prom and I took the opportunity as for me to change my identity. I changed the way that I would dress. I bought loads of makeup because all I wanted now was to be seen. Everything that I wasn't able to get before, I had to get it now. So I was invited to the Universal Church by someone that I knew. Initially, I just enjoyed the presence. I enjoyed everything that was going on within the church. It took a while for me to learn how to use my faith because I had misconceptions. I had my own way of doing things. So I allowed my pride, I allowed my past knowledge of what it meant to be a Christian to get in the way. It reached a point where even being in the church, I hit rock bottom. It got to a point where suicidal thoughts became thoughts that would 
prevail. There were times where I would even go to university and I would be crossing the road and the thought would be like, just grow, just go across the road while the car is there. The moment I decided to truly give myself to God, the change was immediate. Before I wasn't sincere, I only looked at my exterior. But when I became sincere, God was able to help me now to be able to overcome what I was going through. He was showing me fears that I had. He was showing me thoughts that I kept, malice, grudges. Because I wanted him, I took action straight away. I would do whatever he asked me to do and I would continue to ask God, show me what's next. I learned that I wasn't as strong as I thought I was. So it was very humbling for me, but it allowed me to really depend on God. It allowed me to now go to him for everything. As a person of faith with the Holy Spirit, it is a pleasure to be able to go out and speak to people, to evangelize, to tell people about God and the fact that they can see an end to their situation the same way that I was able to. So now I'm completely different. The sister that I am towards my siblings is one that is more understanding so I take time to listen to them. I want to ensure that there is peace in the house and even the relationship with my parents I've seen it grow so they're more closer together and of course that helps with all of us in the household. My sisters also come to the church so it's a blessing to be able to come to the church with them. I don't have a reason to desire the things that I used to desire before because I have contentness inside of me, I have peace. My financial life is blessed, I work in a job that I enjoy, I even own my own car, which makes me more available to be able to add, you know, even in the work of God. At work, I'm confident. I'm able to speak boldly because of who I have inside of me. So even my colleagues are able to see that there is something different about me. The presence of the Holy Spirit is so essential because I've seen that having the Holy Spirit is able to speak to me. I listen to his voice. He's able to guide me and direct me. Before I tried it without the Holy Spirit, but I struggled. But having him, he shows me where I need to change. He shows me how I can be better for him. Let's talk to God. It's time to pray. My Lord and my Father, Thank you for being by our side. Every time that we speak to you, that we talk to God, that we call upon your name, we know, my Lord, that you listen. We know that we are not ignored. And you don't listen because you have to or because we are special or perfect, but because you made a promise in your word that we can go to the Father through you and that is why in the name of the Lord Jesus my Lord we are making our way to the throne room of your presence and in your presence we can tell you anything without being judged for you as a father already know everything that we have done that we have thought that we have said so I ask you my Lord for this person that has challenges lined up for today this person who has problems to solve and they don't know how they're going to solve this problem. But they're going to go ahead confident that when they arrive, when they face that situation, you will show them what to say and what to do. After all you said in your word, my Lord, that when we would be brought before the authorities, you would show us what to say. So my Father, inspire this person who maybe needs to, to perform well at work, in a family situation, in a meeting, this person who has an important life-altering decision to make today, that you may be able, my Lord, to inspire them with your spirit so that they can know what to do. My Lord, we bless this water. Just like the water represents the Holy Spirit, when they drink of this water, may your spirit inspire them and guide them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may now drink of the water where you are. Amen. Believe that the Holy Spirit will be inspiring you in your decisions, your meetings, and your challenges today. Now, let's go to the thought of the day for Tuesday. 
today. And now, the thought of the day. The thought of the day is a saying that's very popular. By yourself, you will walk faster. With a friend, you will walk further. It's true, this is very true. When we walk by ourselves, we get to where we're going faster. Uh, and I know this very well. Sometimes I walk with people or go to certain churches with some people who are in the car with me or walking. And usually it takes a little bit longer. But when you have a friend, the right friend with you, you can go further because that person motivates you, sometimes helps to guide you. So we often say here that you, don't, you shouldn't depend on anybody for your faith. But there's also something to be said about not being proud, not being arrogant, that when you need to ask for help, when you need to ask someone to help you to do something that you don't know how to do, you know, humility is a great, um, it's a great quality and we should use it more often. So remember, whenever you need to ask for help, don't be afraid, ask, because sometimes uh, that person will teach you something that you don't know and can help your life to have more value, can make your life easier. By yourself, you walk faster. With your friend, you can walk further. May God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow here at the same time. Bye-bye.